Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of the caring generation. The caring generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, and everything in between. It's no surprise that needing care or becoming a caregiver changes everything. The caring generation is here to guide you along the journey to let you know that you're not alone. You are in exactly the right place to share stories and learn about caregiving programs and resources to help you and your loved ones plan for what's ahead. Invite your parents, spouses, family, friends, colleagues, and coworkers to listen to the show available on podcast apps worldwide. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, share your idea with me by commenting on my social media posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, click on the Contact Me button, and complete the Caregiver Survey. Welcome to this week's episode number 180, How to Manage What Life Throws at You. We'll be talking about overcoming challenges as a caregiver or a person with health concerns when there is a lot to keep up with. Caregivers share stories of experiencing personal or health difficulties one after another that go on for months and years. Similarly, if you have health concerns, it can feel like one thing happens and then the next and the next. You might wonder if there is ever a point where all of this busyness stops and you can find a moment of peace. Living in the moment when your mind spins with distractions can feel impossible. When a lot is happening, it can be difficult to focus your mind, especially when there are so many unknowns. Caregivers feel anxious and under constant stress because of all of the caregiving tasks to be completed. Too many tasks or too much on your mind can result in an emotional seesaw. Up one moment and down the next. If you are a person with health problems who needs help from a family caregiver, every medical appointment can be an experience where the news you receive may not be what you hope. There may be more follow-up appointments, tests, and procedures. Add to this the challenges of dealing with insurance companies who may delay pre-authorizations for medical appointments or tests. When there's so much happening, caregivers can feel alone or isolated if there's no one to help with caregiving tasks or loved ones, especially when caring for an aging parent or a spouse with a condition like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, aphasia that affects speech, or any condition or weakness that results in physical weakness, being unable to get around. Additionally, caregivers may worry about keeping a job and leaving a loved one home alone for more than a few hours at a time. High levels of chronic stress can result in new health problems for caregivers. If you are a person with health issues, you may find yourself unable to do all of the things that you used to do. It can be concerning to have to rely on others for assistance. If you as the caregiver and the person who needs care are your only companions and you don't create time apart, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed. During this program, we'll talk about five ways to identify and overcome obstacles 
so that you can more easily manage what life throws at you. These ideas apply whether you're a caregiver or a person with health problems, and they can be used in any area of your life. Regardless of your care situation or health need, there can be days of grieving what life used to be like and days of feeling resentful because something has been stolen from you. Only you get to decide how you feel and choose how you will deal with and manage what life throws at you. Number one for managing what life throws at you is to put limitations into perspective. For a caregiver, a limitation might be the time to care for an aging parent compared to time to go to school or work at a job. A limitation for a person with health problems might be a physical injury, a shoulder, a knee, or a hip that makes it difficult to walk or get around or do all of the things that you're used to doing. Regardless of this limitation that some people may call a constraint, any situation that results in stress or anxiety can make it more difficult to think clearly and find solutions. Operating at a consistently high level of emotional distress can shut down the brain's ability to think and focus on problem solving, which is exactly what you need to make it through crazy life situations. So if you're that caregiver who wants to go to school or go to work or do something else, calm your mind, start by investigating the options, those that you know and those you don't know. The ability to admit that one doesn't know everything is a powerful force to move ahead when limitations exist. By thinking that you know all you need to know, you are limiting your options and making it more difficult to find solutions because your brain is telling you, well, this is all you've got to work with. That is not true. That's what your brain's telling you. Don't believe it. Let's add to this the person who has experienced a physical injury. So let's say an injured shoulder, knee, or hip. It's the pits, especially if this is the first time that you have ever suffered from any type of physical injury. What are you willing to do about it? Do you know the amount of effort and steps necessary to fully restore this body part to working condition? Are you willing to do what it takes? Or will you allow this physical issue to become a permanent limitation on your life? When thinking about any limitation, your mind, whether positive or negative, delivers your outcome. Think about it this way. When you're in a positive mood, do you feel like you can conquer the world? How do you feel when you're in a negative mood? Do you feel the same way? If you're like most people, probably not. This is why you must realize that negative feelings like anxiety, not feeling good about yourself, a lack of confidence, significantly impact what you can and will accomplish. Your mood determines your result. It impacts your result and your level of success. So the only way to work through limitations and constraints is to believe that you can and seek solutions by stopping your emotions, stopping your brain from telling you that you can't do something. You can. Stop that voice in your head that says, this is too much to manage. I can't do it. I hate my life. Instead, say, I've got this. I'll find a way. I can do this even if I need a little time to figure it out. Sometimes you can check limitations off the list through your actions, or you can learn to live and make the best of them. You get to choose. This leads to number two for how to manage what life throws at you. 
The skills and experiences of each person are different. So you may look at a stressful situation differently from another person who may go off the emotional deep end and live in constant chaos because they've never considered that there may be a better way to deal with stress and anxiety. So when experiencing a limitation or a constraint and searching for options and solutions, ask yourself, is there a better way to do this? Is there another way to do this? Have I considered every single option out there? Just because you've always done something a particular way and you've been successful doesn't mean that there may not be another way that also results in success and requires less time or effort or a different approach that makes it all just a little easier. Who doesn't want easier? The best way to manage what life throws at you is also to identify issues early. Don't dig your head in the sand. Seek reality. Don't wait until you're boxed into a corner and you have no other options. That is a miserable place to be. Because of the absence of formal education about preventative health and the significant impact health will eventually have on life, many people, caregivers and the persons who need care, do find themselves in a corner at a loss for what to do at some point in life. We all do. We've all been there. We all know how miserable it is to be there. Feeling lost or unsure about what to do is common, especially if you have no prior experience as a caregiver or a person with health issues. Suddenly, you might be swept into a world of working with the healthcare system. You may be seeing or taking loved ones to medical appointments and begin learning how health insurance, deductibles, and co-pays work. The best advice I can give you is don't wait for somebody else to teach you how to do this. Take charge today. For example, if a doctor makes a recommendation, make sure you ask questions and fully understand the reason for the recommendation and all of the details. If you are the caregiver, talk to your aging parent, spouse, or the person you care for to confirm that they understand the recommendation and ask them what they want to do. Just because a doctor makes a recommendation does not mean that the patient has to agree. The patient always has a choice. For this reason, it's critical to make sure that you understand the pros and the cons of the recommendation, including the short and long-term consequences. It's kind of like watching a television commercial for one of those medications or prescriptions, right? And all you hear are these disclaimers like, don't take this medication if you have X, Y, or Z. Taking this medication can cause serious problems like A, B, or C. You hear all those disclaimers and you wonder why on earth would anybody take this medication? That is a good question to ask. Why would you? Why should you? Are there other less expensive alternatives? It's likely that there are. When considering recommendations, do your best to ensure you understand all of the intentional and unintentional consequences. What's going to happen? Everybody is different. What works for one person may not work for another. Add to this that you or the person you care for may not be 100% committed to doing what it takes to make the recommendation work. If you know this, if this is true for you, be honest. Don't lie. Don't tell the doctor you're going to do something that you're not. Instead, ask about alternatives. Instead of telling your doctor you're going to follow directions, knowing that you are not going to do this. Every situation to manage what life throws at you is an opportunity to commit to going for it or, as we discussed in number one, accept the limitation or the constraint and learn how to manage your life without being resentful or angry. 
without looking back a month or a year or five years from now saying, oh, I should have done that. I could have done that. What was I thinking? Think through the decisions that you make today. Number three for managing what life throws at you is to take action, realizing that your plan may not work out. This is the perfect opportunity to take a short break. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. You're with me on The Caring Generation, episode 180. Visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, for more help and support. Also check out my YouTube channel, at Pamela D. Wilson, Caregiving Expert, where you will find over 800 videos answering caregivers' questions. Between this podcast, my website, PamelaDWilson.com, and my YouTube channel, there's something for everyone, whether you like to listen, read, or watch. Please share these resources with others you know seeking help, hope, support, and inspiration. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. We're back with episode 180 of the Caring Generation podcast series, How to Manage What Life Throws at You. In the program's first part, we discussed accepting limitations or constraints. Next, asking if there is a better way to do this. Now we're going to talk about identifying options and considering what can go wrong. So, Number three for managing what life throws at you is to take action, realizing that, as I mentioned, your plan may not work out. This means creating a backup plan with multiple options, A, B, or C. The challenge with being a caregiver or a person with health issues is it may be in a place where you don't yet have all of the information you need to make a decision or a plan. When this happens, you can fall into a place where you're guessing or your mind is spinning with all of these hypotheticals. What if this? What if that happens? What if this happens? How to manage through worry is to identify if the problem is something you can do something about now. If you own the problem and the result. This can be a straightforward process. If you own the problem, research options, make a plan, decide to act. If you own the problem, but you can't do anything about it right now, and you have all of the information, research options and put a date on the calendar when you can do something about it. Let's say there's a worry and you won't have all the information until a date or a time in the future, maybe a week or two weeks or a month. Do your best to let the worry go until you are in a position where you have all the information, all of the facts, can identify your options, plan, and make a decision. Many caregivers tell me that they are in situations, stuck, where they can't move forward because they don't know how long a parent will need help. These situations are not what I call stuck situations. In these situations, the limitation is the thought pattern of the caregiver putting a limitation on the situation because they believe they are the only one that can be the caregiver. There are other options. So again, this limitation reminds us of step number two, which is Is there a better way to do this? Are there other solutions? Have I looked at everything out there? Who else can help? When you've identified those options, look at the pros and cons. What can go right and what may go wrong? This allows you to be prepared. Plan for the best, expect the worst, 
Know what you'll do if it comes out not the way you expect. Consider this a process of iterations or small steps of trial and error that lead you to figure out what works. Learning to problem solve, research, reduce worry, and manage what life throws at you is a continual process. It's a loop of research, planning, agreeing this is a good plan, or saying it's not a good plan, revising and doing and seeing what happens. Number four to how, for how to manage what life throws at you is to strongly consider advice from other people. It's impossible to know everything, especially if you are new to caregiving or have a newly diagnosed or ongoing health problem. Other people may have experiences overcoming these challenges. Why not access that information? Why not learn from people who have succeeded? That's the quickest path to success. Rather than battling every day and struggling because you don't know what to do and you're unsure what to do and what you keep trying doesn't work out. That's like, you know, knocking your head up against a brick wall. Why do that if you don't have to? So one way to get advice from other people in similar situations is to join a support group and participate by asking questions and sharing your story. I have an online support group that I manage on Facebook. It's called The Caregiving Trap. I will tell you that the people in the group are from all over the world. They are amazingly kind, empathetic, and willing to share their experiences. Go to Facebook, search for The Caregiving Trap, and ask to join. I will add you as a member. Since I'm on the topic of advice, let me share some common tips that can help you manage what life throws at you. Earlier, we talked about becoming lost in a swirling mind of thoughts and worry. The advice for this is to focus your mind. Focusing the mind can take commitment if your thoughts are filled with worry and anxiety or you're constantly busy. Let's use the example of an aging parent who watches the news all day and is filled with anxiety and panic. If we're honest, most of the news on the news is not good news. So if you watch the news, you are more likely to become upset or worried about things that you probably can't do anything about. If this is the case, then what is the best thing you or your aging parent who watches television can do to feel better right now in the moment. If watching television is the only option, what about changing the channel, watching a comedy, or a happy movie that would be a better replacement for getting all stressed out and anxious by watching the news? Another example, let's say you're a caregiver and you never get a moment to yourself. Schedule and commit to focus time every day. Sit in a quiet room by yourself and shut the door. Turn off your cell phone. Turn off the television. If you need background noise, play some soft instrumental music. Or go soak in the bathtub. Take a shower. Remove yourself from that anxious, worrisome, stressful situation and do something to make yourself feel better in the moment, now, to move your mind away from your worries and your stressors. Shut them behind a door. Think of this activity as hitting the reset button. You turn off the worry, and you focus on positive feelings. Now, during this focus time, you can write down your worries. You can make a plan to deal with them. If you feel that you have goals that you are not making progress toward, create daily note cards for what you want to accomplish tomorrow. Be realistic about the time and effort it will take to accomplish what you want. Sometimes you may need to break goals into minutes, hours, weeks, or months. Expecting instant results, especially if your plan requires various steps, is not realistic. I hate to burst your bubble. 
In working to manage what life throws at you, the longer you let things go, the more time it will take to reverse them. So commit to managing your mental story and focus on positive thoughts. The minute you think a negative thought, send it away and replace it with a positive visual or a statement. A positive visual could be thinking of your happy place or a person you love. A positive statement could be something like, I turn my face to the light. All worries and shadows fall behind me. So these are a few thoughts and pieces of advice for how to manage what life throws at you. There are many others that you can research and do every day. You know yourself and what will work for you. So start doing it today. Number five for how to manage what life throws at you is overcoming emotional obstacles. The path to reducing chaos, anxiety, and feeling overwhelmed or lost in your life involves advancing skills. You are going to build motivation, discipline, commitment, and confidence. Yes, you will. Yes, you can. Because you will not survive, you will not make it through challenging or seemingly impossible times if you lack belief and confidence and commitment and motivation and discipline, or if you have weak or poor boundaries. Having weak boundaries can mean that you say yes to other people too often. Maybe you agree to think to do things that you don't want to do, or you really can't do. And so you disappoint others. You feel guilty, you feel resentful, and you feel worse about yourself. Why do that? Why repeat those negative patterns? Your success, the path to manage what life throws at you, can relate to many aspects of your life, okay? This can translate from how you handle your relationships, your career, your family, how you manage expectations, your money, your time, who you spend time with, where you focus your mind. You're more likely to feel torn between priorities if you lack balance anywhere in your life. It is okay to make you the priority in your life. How to manage what life throws at you means taking that responsibility for your life and the results that only you can produce. You're responsible for taking care of yourself, even though at times you may need help from others. The people that you care for are responsible for taking care of themselves, even though you may be helping. This means overcoming the emotional obstacles and the people telling you that you can't or shouldn't has to become part of your life. People who say, I could have done that or I should have done that are often filled with regrets. People you know carry their emotional experiences and they play them back to you by telling you that you can't do things because they may have tried and failed. You can say thank you for that advice. I understand you may feel that way. I feel differently. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to find another way. I am going to do this because I believe. I'm motivated. I have confidence. And I'm going to make it happen. Overcoming obstacles to manage what life throws at you also includes learning how to increase your stress tolerance and your reaction to stress, toxic people, and toxic situations. Stress tolerance is the ability to hold up to unexpected or challenging events. So you don't crumble, you don't get upset when times get tough. Not that you don't take a moment to think about it. But you know and you believe that you can manage through whatever this is in a positive manner. Everybody reacts to stress differently. Spending time with yourself in thought can help you identify how you react to stressful 
events and stress triggers versus how you want to react. Let's be honest. The workplace might be stressful if you have deadlines, if you're learning skills. Maybe you're on a team where not all members agree with each other. They're not all on the same page. And then your home life may be stressful. Let's say that you arrive home from work and the person you care for wants your full time and attention and behind them are your spouse and your children and your dog who are competing for the same time and attention. What do you do? How do you balance all of that? Add to this paying for healthcare services and your regular bills may be a constant struggle or worry. Activities to build your tolerance to stress include doing things that you enjoy and things that are good for you. So again, this is you time. This is focus time. It's mandatory. You cannot succeed without this. For example, daily exercise can clear your mind and help you sleep better at night. Other activities like walking the dog, cycling, walking, running, working out in the yard can help you build stress tolerance because you get away from stress and you have time to think. Anything you can do to be present in the moment, like daily meditation, can improve your stress tolerance. Spirituality, prayer, reaching out to others for social support, and sometimes honestly just cranking up the music can also help. Depending on the stress level of your situation, you may need to employ one or more of these stress reducing activities to help you operate at your best, to be in tip-top mental and emotional and physical shape. The traits of highly successful people in all walks of life include optimism and an upbeat personality, emotional intelligence, which means they take responsibility, learn from mistakes, and do not blame other people, and perseverance. They don't give up. Highly successful people also have healthy habits that include daily exercise. Early in my career years ago, before I worked in healthcare, I worked in a couple of companies where the president and the top management team used their lunch hours in the middle of the day by going to exercise. Some of them went to a gym, some of them went outside to run. And it was interesting because this attitude toward health it showed up in other company activities. In these companies, we as employees were encouraged to walk or run in marathons to support health-oriented charities or charitable organizations. And because of watching my mother's poor health and watching these opposite behaviors modeled in the workplace, Gosh, when I was probably 23 or 24, I joined a gym. I started to exercise. I made friends with people at the gym, which then led to weekend participation in volleyball games, water skiing, hiking, camping, snowshoeing, other activities that I still do today that I commit to doing every day. So as a caregiver or a person with health problems who wants to succeed, Learn more about the habits of highly successful people in other roles of life and translate those to your life. Another habit or skill to learn is how to tolerate higher levels of emotional discomfort. This is a tough one for caregivers. To understand this, think of any part of your day where you are emotionally uncomfortable. This also applies to people with health problems. This may be dealing with a difficult coworker or caring for somebody in your family. Emotional discomfort can arise from saying no to a request, feeling that you'll disappoint someone. It can arise from fear of attending a doctor appointment because you don't know what to expect and you don't want bad news. Who does? Developing a higher level of comfort with discomfort, though, means that these feelings that used to set you off or scare you to death will become more balanced. You will become more realistic and more reasonable to say, well, you know, this may not be so bad. 
I don't have all the facts. I'm not going to know until I go get the information. Now, this also means, though, that you have to accept other people's rights to their feelings that may not be your feelings and vice versa. The person you care for may insult you, say something that makes you feel bad, or you may say something that makes another person feel bad and not even realize that you did it. Feelings, words, and actions are interpreted differently by every person you know. Words or actions that upset another person may not even upset you. You may not even notice. Similarly, managing what life throws at you may be or feel impossible while it's easy for another person because they've built up this emotional resilient. It's so important to avoid comparisons. Your caregiving situation, your health concerns are unique to you. Your goals, what you want to accomplish, are unique to you. All of your life experiences, no one else has had them. There may be some that are shared, but you are a unique person. So how to manage what life throws at you benefits as we talk from finding role models or people that you admire who have the skills and characteristics that you would like to have. Find the motivation to keep going when life seems impossible so that you can succeed in the caregiver role and in managing your health concerns in a positive way. And lastly, I would be off track if I did not mention the skill of perseverance and not giving up. Know that there are solutions to every problem once you identify the problem and search for options and advice and make a plan. Managing what life throws at you will be easier if you schedule that focus time and chunk time as I previously mentioned. Focus time is daily time for you to think about your plan, plan for yourself, do things you enjoy, research options. Chunking time is scheduling the work that you need to do to work that plan. It may be time to schedule medical appointments, contact insurance companies, put an appointment at the gym in your calendar, make healthy meals, exercise, order pick up and organize your medications. Long list of things, right? Because as you know, being a caregiver and managing your health, it can be a full-time job at some points in your life. Sometimes there's more time, sometimes there's less time, but Admittedly, it's work, but it's work that you can do. Start your day by stating your intentions for the day and writing down three, time, three things that you'd like to accomplish. At the end of the day, pat yourself on the back for doing those three things before you did anything else, and then make a new list for tomorrow. Hold that vision or statement on hand that you can see if your thoughts go to a negative place. So to recap, choose to accept or manage limitations or constraints. Ask yourself, is there a better way to do this? Are there other ways? Are there things I haven't considered that I should do? Consider all the options and what can go wrong so that you have that backup plan. Be open to advice from people who have succeeded. And most of all, keep your face to the light and leave the shadows and the past experiences that no longer serve you behind you. And start now. Start today. I thank you all for being here. Please check out the other 180 episodes and share this podcast with everybody that you know so that we can extend the support, the education, and the love that so many people, so many caregivers, so many people with health problems are seeking. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, a caregiving expert on the caring generation. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you all. Love to everybody. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and make the most of each day until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.